Guilty. 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 Did you know the British court system is only the way it is today because of a small group of Japanese who visited the Great Britain in the 19th century? It's true, and you can learn all about it in the Great East Attorney Chronicles. Please don't take that seriously. The Great East Attorney Chronicles features two 3DS games in one collection, along with a few extras like a music player, gallery, short extra dialogue scenes called escapades, and upscaled graphics. The second game is actually the latest entry in the Ace Attorney franchise so far. What you see here is footage of the Nintendo Switch version, but this game is also available on PlayStation 4 and PC. It's not available on an Xbox series for some reason. Shame on you, Capcom. The story kicks off in Japan, with the protagonist, Ryunosuke Narodo, a descendant of Phoenix Wright, being tried for a murder he obviously he didn't commit. After being told his trial was under watch by the government, he decides to defend himself. So his best friend, Kazuma Asogi, who's supposed to be his defense counsel, doesn't risk having his upcoming RC studies compromised. This is more than just an excuse to have a tutorial trial, the involvement of a foreign student in the case turns out to be the tip of an iceberg of the overarching plot of the true games, touching on the themes of foreign affairs, xenophobia, international conspiracy, and as with most Ace Attorney games, the fragility of the law system and what it means to go after the truth at all costs. Although in case of great Ace Attorney, we talk about law systems of a fictional 19th century. A series of unexpected events ultimately lead to Narodo being the one who takes the studies to London in Great Britain which is where the meat of the story takes place, alongside a judicial assistant and daughter of his best friend's mentor, Suzato Mikotoba. Amazing! Is, is this really just a railway station? Railway station or not, I've never seen such an enormous building before. <laughs> and look at all the steam locomotives. At times, the first game dragged with the characters repeating things a little too much or taking too long to move on, both in the trials and investigation segments. But overall, I think the pacing and cohesion of the writing is the best the series ever had, for one simple reason. There are no filler episodes. Every case, no matter how seemingly small in stakes, gets the main plot moving. Everything eventually comes back sooner or later to gradually reveal what's going on. You can't say that about any other Ace Attorney game, except maybe the second Miles Edward game, and compared to the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, the connections of the case in that game are still more thin. The games are full of memorable characters, par and course for the series. Personally, I thought the main cast was a breath of fresh air too. Susato isn't just another assistant trying to be bubbly and funny just because Maya was in the original trilogy. The detective is actually very competent and takes his job seriously. The prosecutor, well, I'm gonna be honest, his personality is way too similar to Edward, at least outside the courtroom. 
drink trials, he's freaking Count Dracula and I love his over-the-top wine drinking, glass breaking reactions. But while Edgeworth is introduced as his genius prosecutor with excellent track record under rumors of forging evidence, Barack Van Zixier is known as a cursed prosecutor whose prosecuted criminals have their fate sealed as soon as they step in the courtroom, and regardless of their verdict, always end up dead by some mysterious murder or tragic accident soon after. I fell in love with this story and character so much, this became my favorite in the entire series. Objection! I do have to point out the elephant in the room, Herlock Sholmes, and his partner who shall not be named due to spoilers. So I love Herlock as a character, he's such a weirdo, and also extremely competent at helping you out when needs must. That is just one big problem. Herlock is often a source of what can only be described as some Deus Ex Machina moments in a few of the episodes. You see, him and his partner are also kind of genius inventors, and that gives the lead writer the tool to write himself out of a few corners, introducing some kind of gadget that is only used in one case never to be brought up again. That means, as incredible as the narrative is, you're gonna need a healthy dose of suspension of disbelief. Normally, I hate that, but in this case, I didn't think it damaged the plot itself. It just made my eyes roll at times. Thankfully, it only happens about three times across the two games, and two of those three times end up having the evidence generated from them being rightfully called into question. If you're new to Ace Attorney, the only other thing you need to know is the narrative is very linear. Gameplay is broken down into trials and investigations. Trials are usually treated as the central attraction of the series and that's not different in Great Ace Attorney. And every Ace Attorney has some unique feature to spice investigations up a little. The original trilogy had Psylocke's. Great Ace Attorney Chronicles have the Dance of Deduction. Herlock Sholmes will give a really cool show to everyone in a scene that he's gloriously makes the most ridiculous and off-base conclusions about what's going on. Just like Sherlock Holmes did, he needs the help of a superior Japanese to correct those deductions and solve the mysteries properly. Thank you, Japan! Where would the detectives alone be without you? This feature is used at least once for each episode with investigation phase, and while I beat them, the easy side definitely brings a lot more energy to the narrative when it happens. For those unfamiliar with Ace Attorney, investigation phases involve going around different locations, talking to characters, asking them questions, showing them evidence to see what they have to say about them, or examining the locations for more evidence or reactions. Sometimes the reactions are just for humor or character development's sake. If you're the kind of player who likes when extra dialogue is hidden everywhere, you're gonna love the investigations. And then, there's the trials. That's when you have to follow the story carefully, using all your knowledge of the case so far to identify contradictions in what the witnesses say, or rebutting the claims done by the prosecution. 
The prosecutors are always out for your blood in these games, give you a good feeling of having a persistent opposing enemy in court. What Great Ace Attorney adds to the courtroom is the jury system. Six common folk of London are chosen for each trial, and they have the power to alter the large balance measuring the guilt of the defendant. Their decisions are scripted, so this doesn't really add any real depth to the trials, but it adds an extra obstacle and its implications in the narrative are very interesting. You get a lot of extra characters this way, about as quirky as you'd expect from Ace Attorney witnesses. Some which end up returning to the courtroom sooner or later. Every time they reach a consensus in the prosecution's favor, you have to do a summation examination, hearing their reasoning behind their decisions and pitting contradicting jurors against each other, so they can hopefully be convinced the trial needs to continue. Objection! Besides that, it's the same as every other Ace Attorney game. Listen to testimonies, press for more info, present evidence that contradicts witness statement, then hear the pursued theme playing yes. and slam your own task in excitement because you just cornered and exposed that lying piece of... Anyway, trust me, it's way more fun and addictive than it sounds. The memes don't do justice to how it feels to take down the true culprits and watch the turnabouts unfold. And each time you succeed, the seemingly convoluted story gradually becomes clearer. It's super satisfying. Ace Attorney games have always had strong, amazing compositions, and once again the great Ace Attorney Chronicles delivers. A new composer was brought to the leading position this time, his name is Yasumasa Kitagawa, and some of his previous work includes Goemon's Great Adventure, No Wonder the Music Slaps, not done playing the camera work and animations, but the audio, including both the music and sound effects are more than anything else crucial in elevating what is by all means a slow-paced visual novel with different levels of energy. Try to imagine all the moments you're cornering a witness without the same sound effects and without the music and you'll become very apparent. I feel like Greatest Attorney goes a step further, accomplishing the goal of choosing the perfect instruments and samples for this 19th century great reading setting and filling the courtroom with grandiose sounding symphonies that press the player in the worst situations and encourage them, get the blood pumping when shifting to the more triumphant tone, highlighting the ensuing turnabout. Not everyone will appreciate the same sound effects used since the series Game Boy Advance debut being used here again, and if you really don't like the sound that accompanies the scrolling text, you can always disable it. There is some voice acting too, but it's used for less than 2% of all the game script. Interestingly, they went with Japanese descendants for the voice acting of Naruhodo and Susato, and Naruhodo has a distinct accent without sounding cartoony. I feel like, like I'm dreaming. So this is the capital of Great Britain. So, where to? Oh, hello. Climb aboard. I'll take you wherever you want to go. In that case, um, the Supreme Court in Whitehall, if you wouldn't mind. There isn't much to say about the visuals. They work. Every character has a set of animations that highlight their unique quirks and personality. The background looks really good and you forget it's modeled in 3D until the camera zooms closer for examination. The design of the character models are great, I just have never been a fan of making 3D models, giving them tune or anime shading then call it a day. 
especially at slow paced games such as this, if you're going to go with an anime look, I think characters should be animated a little more like what you see in Arc System Works do with their own games such as Guilty Gear Strive. I have always been a huge fan of the Ace Attorney games, but I never expected one to end up being the game I would enjoy playing the most of an entire year's list. It's unfortunate that to really break down the appeal of these games, it does require to talk more in depth about the story and characters, but avoiding significant spoilers is a personal rule I have. If you have any curiosity of trying out a visual novel and you're ready to approach this as if you're spending time reading a novel with moments of dialogue choices and logic reasoning challenges, I can't recommend this collection enough. With no previous knowledge of the franchise required or any canon references whatsoever, this is a perfect entry point for newcomers. Hating on games with anime art style seems to be a popular thing in the West, but believe me, the usual tropes you might associate the aesthetic with are really, really toned down in these games, so even if you think you hate quote unquote anime games, you still should get it. What you will find here is a narrative and cast of characters with appeal to anyone who likes a good story. If you're not ready for around 80 hours of visual novel experience, then I can't recommend this. Yes, the story spending collection is that long. 